if we look at important aspects of Microsoft licensing, one of the things that you should definitely learn and understand is the difference between versions and additions. So these concepts are yeah, very important to understand. Otherwise, understanding Microsoft licensing will become quite difficult. A version is what it says. It's the date and time of a product release. So Windows Server, for instance, has 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, 2019. So any new release of a product that's called a version in the Microsoft licensing world. Additions, on the, on the, on the other hand, are different functionality wise. So you have Windows Server Standard, you have Windows Server Data Center. Those are different editions. You used to have, for instance, for Windows Server, even an Enterprise Edition, they have three editions. It's a lower or higher edition corresponding to yeah, different functionality requirements. You can see it like this. A version is the same product, but an earlier release. So if you take the latest release, what you want to use an earlier release, you're talking about using a different version. And if you have an addition, you are talking about the product family, but the difference is, is usually functional. So you have SQL Server Standard opposed to SQL Server Enterprise. Within the SQL Server family, those are the two additions that you are able to buy. The basic rule is that you are allowed to use prior versions, especially when you sign up to Software Assurance but lower editions are only possible to be used in case-by-case -case basis. For instance, one of the main things back in the day was the difference between Office Pro Plus and Office Standard. If you bought Office Pro Plus, you are not allowed to use Office Standard. Whereas, for instance, with a, a product like SQL Server that might exist, so you can buy Enterprise, and you're allowed to use standard. So the case by case of has different rules for this. So I should be wary of what you buy versus what you implement and start using. License reassignment is one of the important aspects that we always want to call out. This is also known as the 90 day rule. And there's a lot of text on this slide, but I will try and distill it as simple as possible. And basically, if you buy a license from Microsoft and you install it, you need to keep that on that machine or if you assign it to a person, that person has that for at least 90 days. You are not allowed to reassign this within a 90 day period. So you assign it to a machine, you can at the next day reassign it to a different machine. There's some rules around this when you are allowed to do this for device licenses. If the hardware fails or a loss of device or out of service temporarily, you are allowed to reassign it or in the case of a user the, a license, if that user, that person is fired, termination of employment, or is unavailable for a longer period of time, for instance, sabbatical, or maybe a burnout, unfortunately, and then you are able to reassign that license. There's one big solution to this, and a solution that a lot of companies stick to, and that is acquiring software assurance. Because when you acquire software assurance, license mobility through software, uh, cross server farms comes into play, which means that this uh, rule, the 90 day rule, is, can be disregarded. When you have software assurance for your licenses, basically you are allowed to reassign your licenses as often as you want. So I assign this license today to this device, tomorrow I can assign it to another device. There's no issue there. Indeed, this can be done within server farms. If you do it to other server farms, then that 90 day rule is still in effect. So basically, if I do this for my Windows Server environment, I cannot move my Windows Server license, even with software assurance, to a different server farm within 90 days. A server farm is defined by Microsoft as a single data center or two data centers, each physically located either in time zones, not more than four hours apart, or within the EU or EFTA. Data center can be moved from one server farm to another, but not on a short term basis. One important aspect within Microsoft licensing is something called multiplexing, and this might be present in a lot of different software vendors, um, but I want to explain here what it is in terms of Microsoft. So multiplexing is basically stated by Microsoft as when customers use hardware or software to pool connections, reroute information, or reduce the number of devices or users that directly access or use a product. And this means that anyone or anything accessing a server environment either directly or indirectly needs to be properly licensed. So you cannot gamify the system, so to say, in making sure that you license one machine and then have 
20,000 people signing to that machine, for instance. That's called multiplexing. So they visualize it in a certain way. This is the taken from the Microsoft licensing brief where they explain this. Basically what you see here, that without multiplexing, what you would do is you would have your typical server environment for me, for instance, but it also holds true for cloud licensing. So you can see this as a cloud service as well, if you want. But in this case, you see a Windows server with a SQL server installed, and you see that a person with many devices can access that environment. And that person would need to be assigned the correct client access licenses for Windows Server and SQL Server in order to be able to connect to this device correctly. Other side, you see a device where many people log on to this. And in that case, you would probably want to make sure that your device is properly licensed with client access licenses to use Windows Server and SQL Server on this machine. However, what some people in the past would do is they would put one pooling hardware device in between and say, oh, that device connects to that server, so I'll properly license that device. And then I would give access to that same person that I have on the left hand side or that same device that I have on the left hand side to that pooling server and I uh, will not give them a license because I've licensed that machine that connects directly to the SQL or Win SQL and Windows server. Well, that's not allowed. Basically, what Microsoft says is if you want to do this, you would still need to buy the correct amount of licenses for these people and devices at the end here. So you cannot just license this machine. You would need to license the people that are benefiting from accessing that piece of Microsoft software. And like I said, the same thing counts for cloud. So if this is an exchange online environment and I give one license, I'm not allowed to give a login to that uh, exchange account to uh, all my users and say, oh, I'll just use that same account. That's typically not how it works. Cloud's a bit different, obviously, but uh, multiplexing counts there as well.